what we're going to be talking about today is Argentina. Now, Argentina, actually, let me go ahead and uh, share my screen so you can kind of see a little map of the place. Give me a thumbs up if you see it. All right. So uh, Argentina is much like Chile. Well, I mean, if you, you see Chile is, uh, you know, right, right here. So it's, it's on that same southern edge of, of South America. And, but unlike Chile, well, you still have the, the, the same Andes Mountains that are right here, except with, with Argentina, all of this Pacific wind and moisture that kind of is coming through here is all getting blocked by, by the Andes. And so what ends up happening is that over here in Argentina, that's all super dry. It, it, it's, it's like uh, not only dry, but like warm, especially for, for, for their altitude. And that arid climate though, uh, one, one of the best things about it is that it, it's great for keeping mold and pests at bay with, with little to no like fungicides or pesticides. So it's really easy for uh, Argentinian wines to um, claim organic, just because again, they don't have, they don't have to really worry about that. <clears throat> um, also the, the climate, because of being so dry, it gives farmers a lot better control over how much water the vines are getting. They do a lot of, of drip irrigation. And, um, and that's the, the lifeblood of these vineyards. But fortunately, unlike, um, you know, some of us in the Southwest, um, they really don't have to worry about uh, a water supply because there, there's just a bunch of ice runoff from the Andes. Uh, and, and it keeps those, those water reservoirs pretty well stocked. Now, many of the vineyards, uh, as you can kind of see from both the, the Mendoza area um, right up here, on Salta, not so much with Patagonia, uh, but those those vineyards are right up against the, the mountains. So, you know, I mean, they're 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 they they'll start at fl you know flat like right on the that front range, and then kind of you know go up the mountain just a little bit. <clears throat> now, but most of those vineyards are planted at an average of about three thousand feet above sea level. Uh, and that kind of elevation is key to what makes Argentinian wines pretty delicious and popular. Now, in comparison, uh, the lower parts of Napa are at about 30 feet above sea level, while places in Napa that are like Calistoga and, and Mount Veneer are about 500 to 1,000 feet above. So, I mean, again, you're, you're talking like three times the, the elevation. Now, Argentina is the, the largest wine producer in South America and the fifth largest in the world. And, and viticulture arrived in Argentina pretty much uh, just like Chile. It, it came from a bunch of Spanish missionaries. And what happened was, well, they actually started in Chile and, and they took cuttings from Chile and brought them over the mountains at around at around the, the mid 16th century, like you know 1550s. Uh, and wine historians kind of believe that those cuttings were uh, what's called uh, payas or pays. Uh, it's just you know a word for country, like Chilean country grapes, and and also something from California called mission grapes, uh, which, which over time became local uh, Criolla chica. And, and those would be grown and drunk for, for effectively the, the next 300 years. And, and, and what they call uh, Crioa is, is kind of both, it's mostly meant as red, but it also includes uh, some white grapes that we'll be talking about a little bit later. Um, but it, so those 300 years uh, in the late like 1800s with, with kind of like that worldwide fame of French wines is when this provincial governor asked a French agriculturist to bring over some cuttings from France. And what was included in those cuttings was the now acclaimed Malbec. 
And not soon after is when the phylloxera plague hit all of Europe, started wiping out vineyards everywhere. And many of those winemakers actually kind of fled from, from France and brought all that expertise to Argentina. Now, along with that, uh, the Italians also emigrated and they brought with them a group called Charbono. And this kind of became the secret love of Argentina, which in, in Argentina is Bonarda. And it grows real quickly and produces a lot of grapes leading to it becoming kind of the local favorite, mostly because with it, you know, uh, producing so much, the wine really cheap. But Argentinian, Argentinians do have a saying is that we, we send the world our Malbec, but we keep all our, our Bonarda. And so, I mean, that, that's why for me, you know, uh, that's why you always, you know, whenever I go to a different wine region, I'm always asking the locals, you know, Hey, what do you drink? And, you know, it, it's kind of the same way as that's, that's why after I heard that, it was kind of my quest to, to, to drink every Bonarda I come across. Uh, and what's, what's kind of interesting is that in 2010, uh, the Argentinian government actually declared wine as their national liquor. So it, it, it's that good. Now, uh, the largest region that, and the one that you'll find for the wines in, in almost all stores is is the Mendoza region here. And it makes up about 75% of the vineyards in Argentina. Now, I mean, it looks like a, like small little dots, but then you kind of realize just how big Argentina is. Uh, to, to put it in perspective of how big this, this Mendoza region is, uh, Mendoza alone is about half the size of all U.S. vineyards planted uh, on the you know West Coast, East Coast, Midwest, everywhere. And uh, another way is is all of the wine areas from both Australia and New Zealand put together would still be smaller than that Mendoza region in Argentina. Now, remember when I had talked about the, the average altitude being about 3,000 feet. Uh, actually, let me, let me switch over to, so here in Mendoza, uh, well, that, that 3,000 feet is kind of averaged between 2,000 and 3,600. So there's a, there's a big gap in there. And, and it, it's a huge difference in terms of what's called microclimates. And all of them growing Malbec. Which, which, which is what typically makes Malbec come out so great because you can take some high acid grapes from a high altitude place and combine it with more of a, a robust and perfumey grape from a much lower altitude that you know, is, just has a, a much warmer uh, place to it. Now, uh, the notable subregions of, of Mendoza. So the, the kind of the first big one. So it's, it's gonna be these guys right here, which is uh, Lujan de, de Cuyo and, and the actual Mendoza um, kind of larger region. Now, now Lujan was the first named appellation in, in all of Argentina and being set, and it nestled, as you can kind of see right here, it nestles right up against those Andes. But what happened was that as things got popular, more people started wanting to, to plant Malbec. So everything kind of mo started moving to cheaper land. And so everything moved east into this kind of flatter uh, area that's just called essentially just Mendoza proper. And it took on the same name as, well, as you can kind of see here, you know, there's a little city um, just to the northwest called, called Mendoza. Now, the other big one is, is uh, Uco Valley or, or Vela de Uco. Now, this place used to be a bunch of apple and cherry orchards with, with a few vineyards planted uh, with Mal or planted around. But we, as Malbec was getting so popular, 
the, the Uko Valley being close to 4,000 feet. So even more than, than you know, this, this 2,600 to, to 3,000 square or 3,000 feet in elevation, uh, Uko Valley is closer to, to 4,000. And they found a sweet spot of these kind of vast, warm and cool changes because that, that's actually where uh, a lot of the, the flavors kind of uh, develop is if you, have, if you have a really cold night, not enough to freeze, but say it's 105 degrees during the day and, and you can get it down to, you know, 55, 60 degrees at night, that huge swing creates, uh, again, just, just these, these weird notes and, and, and the wines from, from Uka Valley, uh, are said to be some of the most like complex, uh, aromas around. Now, the other two regions that are in Argentina is Salta and Patagonia. And even though they were effectively on opposite sides of the country, they have, they have, uh, they, they, they end up growing uh, much the same grapes. And that being, so remember what I was telling you before about uh, Crioa? So there's a white grape that is in that group of Crioa, but it's becoming more popular as, as you know, just its name, which is Torontes. And both of these areas, especially Salta, being, I think it's like 5,000 feet above sea level, you get you know, that this like really just astringent, clean white wine. And, and unfortunately, we, we, I couldn't find any through the, the place that we were, we were at. So unfortunately, we aren't going to try it. But I highly recommend um, if you do see some Torontes out there, give it a shot. But uh, on that note, I think I'm done with the talking portion. So uh, we can move on to the drinking, unless there's uh, any questions real fast before we, we move to that. Oh, someone's got a question. So is the main difference between a Bonarda and a, a Malbec just the varietal, but everything else is the same basically? It's like yeah, it's, it's grown in the, in the same regions, mm -hmm. uh, but yes, uh, Bonarda, like I said, is, is Italian Charbono, but they also, uh, they also kind of trace it to, to some, it's like on the border of, of Italy and France, and I can't remember what the, the area is called, but it's called like Dolce Noir, <laughs> and, you know, that, that's kind of like where the, the ancient you know, ancestor of what is, you know, the, the Bonarda grape, you know, kind of comes from, Okay. but, but they are, they are, they are, they're, I guess, effectively, you know, both French, uh, grapes, but at the same time, but, but vastly different in terms of like, even, you know, their parentage going back from there. So that they're going to be, you know, much, much different flavors, uh, to me, Bonarda is, is a little bit lighter, um, a little bit more more fruity, but you know, again, with with some weird complexity to it. Uh, while Malbec is going to be, you know, much darker, going to have a lot more plum to it. You're probably going to be looking at it like, uh, uh, well, that, that's pretty much my my two my two characteristics. Whenever I I can smell and taste Malbec, is do I smell black fruit like blackberry and plum? And do I smell black pepper? So I found this um, Colonia Las Libres Bonarda Classica mm -hmm. and local. So I wanted to try this as well and see how it goes head to head with the and 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 Yeah, <laughs> this is not highly rated, so I think it won't be as good. But I'm curious to try. Yeah, I mean, those are just more like like village style and and yeah. Pretty good. Now, what, what what actually got me hooked on Bonarda in the first place? <laughs> if, if you find it out there, uh, look for for a producer called Tikal, T I K A L, and and their their Patriota is is a fifty fifty blend of Malbec and Bonarda. 
and it is goddamn delicious. <laughs> Can well, you read that to call Patro what? Patriota. Patriota. Thank you. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, pour our Chardonnay. So we have our Zuccardi cube. Now, I, I, I was, I was hoping. Um, I, I see this one is is Valle de Uco. Uh, but they also have a, a Series A, which I think they say is from, uh, I want to say it's from Salta. So, I mean, it, it, if you do see Zuccardi out there, there are, you know, they, they get their white grapes from, from many different places. And actually, I, I, think, I think the Zuccardi Serie A is actually a Toronto, so it's not a, a Chardonnay. All right, so let's give this thing our look. Light straw. Yeah, this is definitely a, like a pale yellow straw. I'll give it a bit of a swirl. I mean, they're, they're kind of medium for a white. So I'd, I'd probably put this at about yeah, upwards 13, but more like 12.5. I don't know what we got. Oh, 13.5. Okay. <laughs> so a little bit more uh, alcoholic than I was expecting. I'm getting some of the alcohol. <laughs> All right, so we'll give it another swirl and a sniff, and then uh, let's see what we start smelling on the nose. I don't know if it's, I can't like pin it down to chalk or milk. Yeah, almost like a shiitake mushrooms. Yeah. Okay. It really like kind of gets rubs. All right, so what are people smelling on this? Curds green apple. But like mushroom. Is kind of interrupting it from being nice and green apple. We've got mushroom, huh? I think it's something earthy. I think it's citrus and pear also. I like peachy. Peach. Uh, I mean, for me, it's like it's like a white, it's like like white peach, white nectarine. Right. But there's there's a. I smell yeast, like it's been. I don't know, uh, like laying on on the lees, so it, it kind of imparts more of a, a yeasty taste to it. But it also smells like toast. So, so to me, I, I'm I'm what I what I would guess with something like this is that. Uh, well, they, they did age it in, in oak barrels, but they weren't, one, they weren't new. And two, uh, yeah, they, they kind of left the, the, the yeast around to, you know, just kind of sit there and give it a little bit more flavor. But uh, well, let's give this thing a taste and see if we're tasting what we smell. So cheers. <laughs> Huh. Very citrusy to me. Yeah, yeah. There, there's definitely a, a, a citrus note to it. I can't place. Yeah, no, there it is. It, had, it, 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 it lingered for a bit and then kind of locked in. Like for me, it's, it's not, it's not like a, like a lemon, lemon lime orange. Uh, to me, the, the, the citrus in this is more grapefruity. 
some green apple too. Taste. I'm going lemony. I, I, I'm getting lemony. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there is some mallow to it because it, it, it's definitely, you know, it's got some acid, but it's creamy. Yeah. It's sour. It's like a sour patch of kids or a sour candy to get. Mm -hmm. yeah. I definitely agree on the sour candy. It's more crisp to me than it is like buttery. Yeah, no, no, it, it's not. It's not buttery. Just it's got like a a, a round mouthfeel. Doesn't have a you know comparatively to say uh, last tasting's pick pool. Yeah, where where that that was just high acid, and, and you know, are people drinking that for long periods of time probably is you know kind of uncomfortable. This. This, this is this is easy drinking, you know, for an entire glass. That's just really good. Now, again, from from what's actually kind of astounding, though, is that, well, it's it's weird because usually when you think high altitude shard uh you're, you know you're, you're expecting kind of a, a higher acid somewhat flinty uh, like like a like a chablis and this 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 still has a lot of fruit you know and, and much of that 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 new world you know just like punch in the face of you know well, well, again fruit comparatively to yeah the, the more mineral and and subtle like notes that would be in, in uh, like an old world French wine. But uh, yeah, well, let's, let's see. Uh, not sure what everyone has for potential pairings with this one, but hopefully we've got something either creamy, cheesy. So I have provoletta which is basically melted provolone cheese with some oregano on it. And we put that on bread and chimichurri and it was really good. Okay. And then Rob made some carnitas and I added chimichurri to that and also really good. So so the, the, the chimichurri is just, it, it doesn't matter if it's red or white, that stuff's gonna be kind of the, 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 the rock star of the, of any pair of any Argentinian pairing. Really? It's just good. It's so good. Like, it would go with like I didn't think that it would be this good. I'm like, it's just parsley. What the heck? It's really good. What's in those? Mostly just chicken. Mostly just chicken, but there's cheese too, right? Hmm. We had some um, some shrimp. Mm -hmm. It was excellent with the butter shrimp, and I agree with the chimichurri. because oh. it, it pairs very well. Really? Yeah. Uh, that that kind of. That might be my favorite. As soon as I started, as soon as I started getting that that grapefruit flavor to me, um, I mean, yeah, you're looking at the same kind of stuff as like a, a either a Chilean white or like a New Zealand Sauv Blanc, where as soon as you start pairing that with something else that's green, it's really going to come to the forefront. And that's that's what the, the chimichurri is doing for me is all of yeah. a sudden that, that kind of like herbaceous green is coming yeah. you know, right out. They pop. It pops. With the provolone cheese, it's really good. Is it? Mm. Not great. No. And the veggie. Right. Any other winning pairings out there? Oh, yes. Kurt made this, I don't know, croquette thing. It's chicken and cheese, and it's just amazing. It's mm -hmm. really good. I think it's my favorite so far it's with this one. Yeah, this thing is brilliant. I'm going to start making these. <laughs> it did not go very well with the vegetable empanada. Spinach, mostly. I would have, I would have thought this would go well. Maybe we should have our salad with this. Sure. 
that's tricky to me. I would think the only thing that you'd want to stay away from is probably the beets, just because that that earthy with the citrus probably is going to clash. Thanks for the tip. Mm. Yeah, the, that herb goat chevron that I have also really good with this. But for, for those of you that are, you know, again, I, I can't stress enough that if, if you haven't had Torontes before, um, it, it's, it's much more like uh, I don't know if you've ever had Spanish Albarino. It's, 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 it's still kind of a, a heavier white, um, but not in the same way as, as Chardonnay, where it's, uh, you know, it, it's still got a little bit, it, 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 it'd be kind of a cross between, you know, think of more like Pinot Grigio and, and a little bit more oily Albarino. So it's, it's, it's a lighter, but still really good. <laughs> the best was the, this, the bread. And the cheese. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome to speak. To no one. It was what she said. There's a picture which is going really well with the table so far. <clears throat> this one, I think, is my highlight. I think this calms down the salads. Really? I don't. The I, so not for really me. Down. Yeah. Hey, Corey, what'd you pair with this one? Because I think it takes away some. Uh, I had a brie. And then I tried the chimney cherry as well. Uh, the brie did not seem to do. I, I did not enjoy that pairing, to be honest. Okay. Did, did like did you put the the chimney cherry on the brie? No, I did not. Try that. You should try. Most amazing thing. It's ridiculously simple. Chimney cherry. Chimney cherry. Chimney cherry. I know, my, my, my chimichurri was like stupid simple. I, it's just a, it was a packet of herbs that I ordered from Amazon and all you had to do was just add olive oil and some vinegar to it. Oh, I made, I made Rob go get some <laughs> fresh parsley, but uh, everything else was dry, so. I didn't put the fresh parsley because I'm all that. Because you need to bring that Radish is not good with this. Not good. Not at all. Yeah, I can't think of that. Wow, that 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 to me that seems like a one of those like I won't say unpairable, but but hard to pair things. Radish, yes, doesn't go with anything. Oh, Beer. That, you know, I, I would just much like asparagus. I would probably um, try try to to put it up against uh, Gruner Veltliner. And then you have to tell that, that that Austrian wine is, is usually well. I mean, it, it is the only wine that that's kind of proven to pair with asparagus. So and it, it's it's kind of the you know Swiss Army knife of pairing with things. Would have to be yeah, because the the radish is just hideous with it. Now, have you ever, have you ever grilled a radish? I have not. How are they? That that is an experience you need to try. <laughs> mm. All right, I'm, I'm on it. <laughs> so do you do you just uh, toss it in olive oil and yeah. put it in yeah. a basket? Yeah. Just, a, just a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt, and yeah, just. I don't even. Well, I mean, I just do it like on the grill, so they actually have like a little bit of char. Right. Why not? Or some Okay, I'll try it. I've never heard of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, oh, those are for me. Well, the first time that I did that was uh, well, because I, I did it with uh, Jerusalem artichokes, mm -hmm. or also called sunchokes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I was like, these things taste just like radish. So mm -hmm. then I tried radish. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially some of the, those longer uh, uh, French breakfast radishes. Oh, yeah. Wow. 
we have a little bit of like a stone for drunk. Rachel's making yeah. a face like she doesn't like this wine. Well, no, no, I haven't tried the wine yet. So just oh. sat down. Um, but a wrong breakfast radish, like all of that is a oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> At least that, that that's why I, I whenever I bought them from from a farmer's market, that's what they were called, were French breakfast radishes. But, but they're they're weird. They're not they're not they're, they're not round. They're they're kind of like long. Sounds disgusting. But, but they have like, still like everything about that. Maybe something you don't want to see. It's just chose the regular ones. Oh really? I like my Here you are. I don't think I've ever had them. All right. <laughs> See, how's everyone's glasses looking? Empty. Empty. Yep. I can quickly make mine empty. Rob's is empty. Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh. Let's let's. Oh, at least for me, let's move on to the the star of the show. <laughs> so that will be the enemigo Bonar. <laughs> Narda. Yes, for, for me, the, the I like the uh, flower and everything. It's in my kitchen. Except I was saying it in Spanish accent. We're using another glass. Oh my gosh. Yeah, thank you. So I linked that case. We did go because Marcy had to make this. Not even close to how to actually make this. Oops. Like, I didn't know how cook worked. I would have been for that. I can never be a server because I can't pour wine without soda. Sorry. I'm, I'm never going to be able to eat a whole piece that you have. Wow, had. this is really a, had it in like Whoa. half or third. I okay. you, you had it. But it looks amazing. Wow, this looks darker than I was expecting. How is it? It's oh. uh, opaque. Yeah. Because I would call this like just a little bit of dark, dark, yeah. ru dark ruby bordering on purple. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah it's really purple. purple. So we will compare. Uh, yeah. Uh, cheap and expensive. It's purple. it's even more purple than ruby. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Not always about what you usually, but not always. All right. So, give this thing a swirl. There's, there's a good amount of staining to those tears, but they're coming down kind of fast. I'm not sure about that. These are pretty, like, there they are. Yeah. So no, I mean, uh, I, I, I I wasn't right on the on the shard, but yeah, I'd probably put this at like thirteen five fourteen. This is thirteen five. Oh, cool. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and uh, swirl it and give it a sniff. It's really good. So how would we eat it? Over the bread. I put it on bread with cheese and it was amazing. I gave you. Oh wow! Okay. It smells phenomenal. I will go do that. I'll be right back. Okay. okay. So, so what are what's everyone smelling on this? I smell like a almost like a leather to me. A leather? Okay. Yeah. Smell in a undergrowth in a forest. Like a spice. Yeah. Like what? Undergrowth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, earthy, very earthy. Uh, I was gonna say earthy and plum. Plum, yes. Wow. Yeah. Me, I'm getting like dark cherries and almost like vanilla Coke. <laughs> Smells like green chili. It's, this is communion wine, like 100%. <laughs> right? The blessed. 
Well, I mean, you getting married? Methodist Church of Falls Creek. Well, I think drunk on the fumes. Anything else? <laughs> right by your elbow. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm excited to try. So, uh, so, so, cheers, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, so we don't have guilt. We just we like suffer ourselves. Go, we go to live in the coldest places mm -hmm. like Minnesota. Germany <laughs> open for a while or not? It really bites the tongue. No, so I opened it like three and a half hours ago, or three hours. Now. I, again, I didn't smell it, but I'm I'm definitely tasting that that leather that that you were smelling. That's kind of good. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I'm not I'm not crazy yet about it. Maybe I need to try the With right food. food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got a it's got a bitter under undercurrent to it. Definitely. Yeah. So I'm, oh, I'm, I'm wow. hoping that some, some chimichurri is going to make this thing shine. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what I'm trying. <laughs> like this isn't nearly as dry as the white. Okay, I had the 2017 of this, and it was a lot different. This is quite different. Oh, it is? Okay. This is really strange. It hasn't been opened yet. No, I... I opened mine almost oh, what, three hours ago, I guess, but I didn't decant it. Oh, just, you know, if you, if you don't think it's, you know, airy enough, just, you know, shake it in your glass a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, right. But ooh, at least for me, yeah, uh, that, that chimichurri is all of a sudden makes this thing pop. Like the bitter goes away. Sure. No. It really gets all like the herbs in the chimichurri. Mm -hmm. Was this one of the ones that you said that would be good with the oatmeal too? Mm -hmm. Oatmeal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, actually. Yeah, I like it better. It's the only thing that can redeem it, in my opinion. Okay. Maybe the fat of the salami. Yeah. Let's see if uh, let's see if this thing has any any spice to it that I was detecting earlier. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. It goes well with a salami. Right. Salami. We think. I think that's the best pairing. So it's the best pairing so far. Yep. Mm -hmm. Put some uh, Jimmy Jerry on it though. Okay. Okay. That was that was weird. I I had some uh, some oatmeal cookie with it. And it didn't really bring out a lot of spice, but it, it, it all of a sudden made it more peppery. Yeah, salami is good. Hmm. If you have any of that. You know, like profile of like gingerbread? Like when I paired it with the oatmeal, it kind of brought that out, like that season. Seems like a fat. Like that cinnamon and nutmeg? Yeah. Like it really made it come out. Yeah, no, I, they would have been drinking that for a lot of meat. I think it's like specifically the nutmeg. Yeah. No, most of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the <clears throat> one of the menus or one of the it's very frequently served. 
So, Corey, you uh, you starting to become a believer in the oatmeal cookie? Yeah, I definitely am. <laughs> it is weird going from like steak and cherry to oatmeal. Oh yeah. I like it now better. It's the fat. Yeah, it's the fat. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, okay. So this is how it takes time in the weather in a way and brings out a little bit of fruit, like a lemon black fruit. And it makes oh, that's really amazing, the difference between yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, that's, always, that's always the thing about, you know, it's why I'll never you know, not drink a wine that, that I don't enjoy just by drinking it because you never know that all of a sudden you have it with some food and all of a sudden it becomes spectacular. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my biggest takeaway from these. Like, this definitely needs fat. I think. Which is a sign of, you know, kind of a, a higher acid wine. Right. But I mean, and, and, and that's the, you know, kind of the saving grace of, of chimichurri, not just the, the herbs, but because it's, it's got that like kind of, you know, olive oil base to it that, I mean, that right there is already contributing that, that fat factor to, you know, kind of coat, coat and protect your tongue. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. Mm. I, I'm, I was uh, doubtful that I would find anything I like with this wine, quite honestly, to begin with. But Fair enough. That, definitely. But I mean, that, that, that's, and that's, it's kind of the reason why I, I am not a fan of Pinot Noir is because, you know, I, when, when I drink wine, I'm, I'm almost inevitably going to have it with food and really the kind of food that i like mm -hmm. would would totally trounce you know the, the subtle profiles of a pinot noir and so that, that that's the main reason why i don't like pinot noir you know other than that kind of earthy loamy taste to it but it's it's just because yeah i can't find anything that really that i like that pairs well with it because really it's like pork and Lucky. Mushroom risotto. Wow. <laughs> Pretty limited. Yeah. <laughs> well, or, or, well, actually, there, 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 there's one time a year when Pinot Noir is, is like, you, you cannot go wrong with Pinot Noir. And that's, that's Thanksgiving. Because that, other than pork, what Pinot Noir does really well with is dark turkey. <laughs> oh, okay. And, I will keep... and and all of its accoutrements. So I mean, like you know, between the stuffing and mashed potatoes and everything, yeah. But uh, what's the that, that, that that is that is the time when all of a sudden I'll break out my you know one of my four That's bottles fine. of uh, Pinot Noir that I have. You know, when uh, those four bottles are among my my four hundred bottle collection. <laughs> okay. So that it it it, it doesn't take up much of my yeah it, it, it's kind of there for that that special occasion it's a it's a utilitarian use of wine who knew utilitarian yeah. but, but again you know and, and because like again i i i went through you know while i'm at and tried almost every single pinot noir there was trying to ch change my mind of Pinot Noir and it didn't. But, you know, I, I know when, you know, a good wine pairs with, you know, with particular food. And so right. I, I'm going to go with it, even if I don't like the wine by itself. <laughs> That's right. <clears throat> As it should be. Indeed. It does right. remarkably well with um, arugula. Really? 
I, I'm, I'm going to guess okay, that it, it didn't, the arugula didn't go as well with the shard, or did you try it with the shard? It didn't go, it went pretty well with the shard. I liked it with the shard. Did you guys like yeah, it? Yeah, I think there was some of it. Yeah. It wasn't like right. the best, but it wasn't yeah. like, so uh, no, yeah. please stop. <laughs> I would eat it again. I had a, a right. arugula with a, you know, an ice, this, you know, one of these for many courses. Mm -hmm. Like some of the alternative banana. Yeah. Yeah, my, my it tastes very green. That's for sure. Like the banana? No, no, no. I mean the um, oh. the wine with arugula tastes oh. very green. Right. The eight ninety nine wine. <laughs> the alternative. Uh -huh. They're more. They're more. You get out purple. Is no, I think I, it's garden. You, you just want your own chair, don't you? You do. Yeah. You just want your own chair. Look at, look at that look. You just uh, angry. You call this more. As everyone's glasses looking. <laughs> ready. Are, are we ready to move on? Do it. Move on. <laughs> new cup, new cup, move on. <laughs> All right. So next is our 2018 Malbec. Uh, Pro, Promeo? Pro One of the two. Yeah. Single Vineyard Mendoza. I think everything that we're drinking tonight actually comes from Mendoza, which kind of makes sense. Did you say, what's the next one? The, the Malbec. The, the Promeo or Promeo? Proemio. Proemio. Proemio? Proemio? I think it's Proemio, but I'm not sure. They typically That's tend right. to pronounce every letter. letter. Mm -hmm. Unlike English, where we were so like, just, nah, just throw through. that shit away. Or we'll pronounce it nine different ways. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I was hoping that. Uh, but I, between the, the the last one and this one, that uh, the last one was going to be lighter, but I don't know. Th this one actually is 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 almost kind of like this one's much more the of a dark yeah, ruby than the than the purple tinge that the Bonarda was. Still super young. It, it has no rim variation whatsoever. I think I think this one I got. That was just. All right. What chocolate, chocolate, or do you want? And we'll give it a bit of a swirl and look at those legs. I will eat it off of there. Okay. So, so, Rob? Yes. Oh, they are. Oh. Yeah. They look good, don't they? They look very good. Oh, yeah. Can I have one, please? You curl the edge on your own? Yeah, you made. That's beautiful. Uh, that's got skills. I've lost all of my forks. <laughs> I've like, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos of people doing that. That's I'm my fine. life now. I just need a bite of this chocolate. I give you a solid fork, an Andre fork, and a dessert fork. So you're, you're so fork. there's a, there's a little bit of of staining, <laughs> not nearly as much as the Bonarda. <laughs> and as I'm looking at the tearing on this. Oh wait. There's some that come down fast, but then all of a sudden you get this like these like huge globs that are coming afterwards. Which to me is is probably indicative of this being somewhere around like 14. What is and survey says? I'm gonna have to take this 14 3. Thinking too many. Yeah. Well, I know. That's why I, when I saw the size of the, the size of the salad, I went, oh, geez. That's okay. There's two more. There's two more. Well, you want something to get you messed up fast. You know? Look at Steve. Oh boy. Yeah. 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 All right. Like high, super high alcohol, probably. So, all right. So, let's give this thing a, a spin and a sniff. Mmm, smells still really divine. Like Put them in my purse. No, we had a brown paper sack for our, our go box. 
And so she put the two wine glasses on the steak bag. <laughs> to go back. So did we look at the color at all or not? Yep. I, I, I think okay, you guys I were talking. I, yeah, I, I missed it. No, yeah, I was actually <laughs> tin, tinning empanadas. That's where we had to think. Yep. I, this one, it was it was lighter than the Winarda in terms yes. of, you know, it's much more dark ruby than I, the purple definitely. of the last. Yep, definitely. This is it's still open. And, and it's tearing, you know, to me was more like 14, but mm, yeah. it's 14.3. Yeah. It's what? 14.3 ABV. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. No, I could, I definitely. The grove. Definitely the see that. So, okay, so, so what are we smelling on it? Mm. Right next to the convention center. I got a whiff of mushroom, but I, that could be wrong. Steamship. Yeah. I'm getting black fruit. Yeah, black, black fruit. fruit, black fruit, definitely. I smell potting soil. I smell oak and bread. So there's something or the oak or feather. Oh man, what is it? There's there's definitely some. Well, to me, I, I'm smelling a lot of spices. Yes. Both both black pepper, but also baking spice. Yeah. I smell feathers. <laughs> but but it's like a combination of cherry and plum. It, 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 it's okay. It's a lot less High emotions. Are they happy emotions? <laughs> You're safe and good. <laughs> Rich and wild. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the, this I is the yeah, I Anyone know. else get anything different on the on their nose? Smelling, smelling flathead leg. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not I never realized that that's how my brain yeah, works. No, I think a lot of people oh. do. I, uh, to me, I don't. I don't think it's. To me, it, it, this this isn't that complex. But uh, no, you know, it, 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 again, it's. To me, it, it's it's got those same traditional Malbec. Smells. Yeah, Mendoza Malbec. So let's uh let's go ahead and give this thing a taste. So you won't be until November. I have to go. I have to go through Carfield, and I have to go by every day. So for me to go to Ivy, I have to go. And there's it drives around the parking lot looking for expired Missouri tags. That's literally a That's a weird mouthfeel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Super tanny, but smooth. Um, wait, Sur surprisingly smooth. Kansas cop is above seeing it for expired yeah. Missouri tags. And they wait until I'm on state find it over. Mm. The parking lot. I swear to God, they sit in the parking right. lot and wait for There's a solution for this. Okay. <laughs> But that would require me paying attention, which is not something that I don't they send you your thing like three months early? They don't. And I don't know why. It's you never... need to contact them because they didn't do that to me because my ex husband changed our address. All right. Um, sorry, Team Foodie, but I'm going to mute you for a bit. <laughs> I don't think YouTube needs to know uh, of all the life details. <laughs> uh, Anyways, uh, what are people getting on the flavor for this? Because to me, I'm not getting the plum that I was expecting. It's it's much more of that kind of bitter, tart, black fruit. It's almost like a... Almost like, I'm getting currant. Yeah, so like like black currant and almost kind of like, like underripe blackberries. Wraps, <laughs> these wraps are bad. Bad, bad. I mean, in fact, that I, I was almost done by the time that I put two and two together. It's like, let me taste mm. another one. We can eat the insides. Yep. Still getting well, the black pepper. Still getting, I don't know, there, there's definitely not, well, that's the thing about when they say baking spice, you know, like I said, I, I think of like all three. I, I think of cinnamon, nutmeg, and clove, but this this really only has like the the nutmeg portion to it. Right. There's like kind of like that that it's it's weirdly aromatic but bitter. Yep, I bought them frozen, mm -hmm. and they're bad. It's bad. Oh well, I'm oh. glad I didn't. They're a little off. All right. Yeah, and and you know what I'm. Well. 
I'm going to go get some fresh. It's phenomenal with the chimichurri. Well, I mean, that that is that is the one of one of the perfect pairings is is Argentinian Malbec and, and chimichurri. Mm. That is what I'm going to eat right now. Yeah, me too. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Are we having a religious experience? Uh, well, oh, oh. <laughs> yes, kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, it, it, it's one of those things of, you know, you, you, you know, the, you know, the ritual and, and once you get through it, you know, you, you feel cleansed. <laughs> Your soul is pure. <laughs> And, and you're ready for ascension. <laughs> well, there you go. You, yeah, you, you haven't arrived yet? I, oh, I, th I thought never. that's what it's all about. <laughs> I, I thought that, the the that, fun is in getting there. Well, yeah. <laughs> at, at, at least in my Dionysian mind. <laughs> well, like, like I said, you know, it's, it, it is about hearing the angels sing when, you're, when you've got the food. <laughs> It goes with the wine. It's hard to beat it, right? <laughs> the dark. Hmm. I mean, I I, I kind of cheated with my you know steak. Well, one, I I got fillet, and you know, two, I also coated it in a Brazilian steakhouse rub before I seared it and then uh which and I and I thought it was undercooked because it was just I I don't normally cook filet so for me it was like is this thing undercooked because it's still kind of squishy and no it's just that it's a freaking filet <laughs> exactly yeah this is the first one that really went well with I did um flank steak uh -huh. I bought a, I bought a uh, store at the store. I saw a chimichurri marinade, like it was specifically meant to marinate your steak beforehand. Oh. So I marinated that most of the day, then, you know, wiped it down, seared it. And then I'm um, eating it with more of a fresh chimichurri. And this is the first, first wine that that has gone just really, mm. really well with. So Sarah has her hand up. I make this Dolce de Leche chocolate cookie cake thing, torta, torta, <laughs> torta. It is amazing. It's so what, what's, what's coming out in it? It's just like, okay, let me, let me try it again. Hold on, <laughs> <laughs> twist my arm here. So oh, it's, Lord. it's layers of a chocolate sugar cookie and, um, what do we call it? Dolce de leche. Dolce de leche and cream cheese okay. blended together. So it's thin layers of the cookie and that with a chocolate ganache on top. It just like smooths it out. It makes it a little, I don't know. I like it a lot. Very nice. Now, now, now for, for the ultimate test. For the cookie. There was some, <laughs> the oatmeal uh, cookie. You have to take some of this home. Yeah. It's decent. There's also some kind of it's just decent. Yeah. Like, I'm not complaining. It's good. But... Comparatively to the the how it paired with the Bonarda. For some reason, this seems more mellow with the. But I don't know. Yeah. Mm. Uh, to me the, the 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 baking spice but all of a sudden like cherry just comes to the forefront bad fat bad fat um well it, it just kind of it was it could be just the different in the cookie too i think mine has a lot more nutmeg in it which is overpowering this completely i don't know if the uh if it had gotten hot or had gotten baked mm -hmm. somehow mm. yeah it wasn't the first time that no i i I have, I've, uh, oh my God. <laughs> right? 
right? Suck the wine right. at this point. One of my friends made last Everything we should be doing like hmm. chocolate cake tastings. <laughs> <laughs> Because Crisco, you you know when you open it up, you can smell it. Mm -hmm. And it, it wasn't until this stuff act, like it got kind of got my nose into it, and, and it was getting toward room temperature. That feeling about this. So, oh well, they look pretty. Mm -hmm. We had fun. I'm sorry for the cow that I kept. The girl cow. Mm -hmm. But oh well. More food than we can eat anyway. Oh yeah, I know, but <clears throat> it's it, it was also like a fair amount of work because I've got like you know, twenty or so. All right. And, but I the, the good thing is that I as soon as that last how's our how's our glasses looking? Pretty empty. Pretty empty. <laughs> Pretty empty. Almost empty. All right. It wasn't horrible, though. Not horrible, but anyway. Oops. Wow. Thank you. Thanks for, for finding the recipe. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being able to read. It's like. <laughs> well, and execute. This is pretty difficult. Uh, execute on, on the. That flavor. I'm, I'm, I'm so very grateful that you are like, I need to do this. Okay. All right. So Thanks. we are on to our. Not a lot. 2018 cab. Okay. Now this one says it's actually high mountain vines. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, if, if I was a betting man, Mendoza, uh, I mean, normally if it's, if, if, if they're going to, if it's from Echo Valley, it's, it's going to say that. So I would probably say this is from just Mendoza proper, but you know, I'm going to guess this is probably closer to those like 3000 to 3,600 foot elevation instead of uh you know so two thousand I'll do that leave it in the can pressure cook it for like 40 minutes there you are thank you like you know an hour right all this little glass oh gosh tomorrow well not really you know the, the, these are actually um once you make the cookie dough that needs to chill for an hour before you put it in the oven because it, it's only, you know, like you can butter to be cold in the oven, otherwise it will oh. melt. But again, the, the, the color on this is, to me, much, you know, much in that same realm as, as our Malbec, kind of that dark ruby. No, chocolate, yeah. Yeah. Very, very, very dark, yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll give it a bit of a spin. Check it out. Now, this, actually, if I hold it against here, I just want to check the tear, the staining on it. And wow, it's actually staining the, the glass as it coats. So even though this is this is high altitude, it's also high temperature. Yeah, I see that. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Like my glasses. It, it, it all of a sudden just makes the, the the whole glass kind of pink when you swirl it. <laughs> so as they're pulling down, though, they're actually pulling down. I would say fairly quickly, especially for a cab. So I would probably put this at like. More like I mean, I I wouldn't put it anywhere. It, it's definitely not fourteen. Um, this is probably like 13, 13, 5. 13, 5. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and uh, give this thing a swirl and a sniff. Like reviewing All right. So what's everyone getting on the nose? We're getting red fruit and oak, and, and the oak is kind of strong. Mm. Oak. Oak. 
Yeah, I was gonna say like raisins or dates or figs. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay, the uh, two front mouth actions. Oh, the tobacco. Oh, oh, yeah, like like compared to the previous one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, th th this definitely smells like mm -hmm. like ripe, if not almost like baked fruit. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't it's know. It's very it's... sweet for a for a capsule. Very yeah, sweet smelling to me. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I'm I'm getting you know much kind of like like fig and cherry. I don't know what fig and cherry is. What does that mean? Fig, like fig and, and cherry. Oh, fig. Sorry. <laughs> She's like, what the fig and cherry? <laughs> I don't fig and cherry. Like, what the fuck is that? Fig and cherry? <laughs> no, I I smell tobacco and. So what, dates, like yeah, because there, there's something under there's something in that undertone for, for you it smells like you said it smelled like leather i said tobacco or tobacco yeah like, to me i i smell i smell licorice like anise i don't smell oh. the anise because i've had two pieces of licorice already tonight so <laughs> you know how we are with our licorice mm-hmm all right. Well, let's uh, have our, our last taste of the night. So cheers. The whole last taste of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Very mellow. It is. It's smooth. Oh, I more of this quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Wow, that thing's got a long finish to it. It just starts to kind of morph in terms of its flavors. Yeah, it's kind of mm -hmm. the spiciest chimichurri I've ever had. But it's it's not like full body. It's like gross balls. It's not spicy at all. What the heck? <laughs> it's got a lot of parsley. Because <laughs> I put so much and parsley in it. Well, that's what chimichurri is. All right. Oh. What, are, what are people tasting on this? Like a jammy and a really ripe strawberry. I was worried that I wasn't putting enough. Ripe strawberry. Okay. But like, but like, like not red fruit strawberry, like strawberry that went bad two weeks ago. Oh, rotten strawberry. Rotten strawberry. Yeast and cherry. Yeah. See, I, I'm. Me, I'm I'm getting much more of that kind of like like a black cherry. Yeah, me too. It's very tart. Okay. Yeah. We have been doing Zins, which have had a lot of black cherry, which is maybe making that taste different for me. Mm, this is very good with this. Uh... You are right on about it, like lasting longer than the other wines on the tongue. <laughs> and it well changes. Yeah. I don't know why yeah, it go, it goes kind of like weirdly bitter, and then I'm trying to pick. I'm I'm trying to a little longer capture like what, what what that bitterness tastes like. It doesn't like bite the tongue as hard as the previous wines did, but the bite lasts longer. To take my leftover. Where's the bad? tongue. Oh, yeah, that's what it tastes like. It it, it tastes like like coffee grounds. Like like a you know if you've ever had a like a chocolate covered espresso bean just that mm -hmm. just that kind of like bitter bean yeah. flavor, but there's also like a a weirdly wow. that past that it, it's almost kind of perfumey like I'm like like I'm eating violets. Yeah, that's what it is. I don't love it with the beef and banana. Yeah. There's lunch. <laughs> oh, for sure. Just gonna try a beat with it. Oh, oh, all that, uh, I'm just really glad that I still have some. I don't like that. Still in. And, uh, if I buy it. I don't want to pair it with we get because I don't understand. All right. Well, Jimmy Cherry to the rescue. <laughs> this is really complicated, but there's a lot going on here. 
I'm pretty good with it. <laughs> Beets, yeah, yeah. Of course. The, beet, the beets are good. Beets are good. Beets are good. No, they're not. <laughs> I, I, yeah, because it was, I mean, to me again, that was those kind of like bitter oh, notes. I, I would think would kind of mesh well with the the earthy of the the beet. It works. Hmm. And um, this is just absolutely phenomenal with the chimichurri and flank steak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I'll, I'll say that it, it, it's not as good as, as with the Malbec, but it, it's, it's better than with the Bonarda. I wouldn't like, I'll call it a good pairing. I just think it, it doesn't pair as well with the chimichurri, but it pairs better with the steak itself. Yeah, yeah just, just steak by itself. <laughs> Maybe I'll tie a radish with it. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> The cake. I mean, I mean that, that that's the rule. If, if you're if you're if you're even remotely curious about it, I, but, um, you know, yeah. that way it's either something you're going to repeat again or it's right. something you're never going to do again. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done that. Yes. <laughs> Next. 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 This is the first one I've had that goes well with the dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, I mean, you know. Cabin dark chocolates to be common. Never again, never again. Never, never again. It might be dangerous for me, honestly. Yeah, you you need to soften up radish. I mean, just because it's it's got that kind of like weirdly peppery, right. somewhat salty bit to it. It's like there's not much that's going to pair with that. So yeah, you got to introduce something to it. The, the grilling, what it does is it, it will. Uh, uh, Concentrates the, it caramelizes the sugars. Yeah, the yeah, it, it caramelizes it, but it also tamps down that, that almost like horseradish. Yeah, yeah, you know, peppery thing. Yeah. So if someone came to you and said, hey, I've got a bunch of radishes, what wine should I pair with it? <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, it, 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 it's what you should pair. Gruner, Beltzner. <laughs> yep. Yep. I'd, I'd point them as a Gruner. I've been paying attention. Look at you, knower of things. That's a German. Well, 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 it's just that 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 Austrian wine is just kind of for, for for all the weird stuff that's unpairable. It it's it's kind of the default. Yeah, that could pair with it. You know, what do you think? Like yeah. it? Yeah, weird. Oh yeah, it's so good. It it is a weird food. Um, I I mean I I would imagine that turnips are much the same way, although. Yeah, but I mean, like turnips and parsnips, though you can, you can. You I don't I don't think you're just well one. You're not really just eating those raw. You know, you're you're cooking them some way. You're either blanching them or baking them or something. <laughs> and, and and as soon as you start doing that, then you also have other options for, well, what am I doing with it? You know, am I, you know, I, I can along with these things that I'm either, you know, one cooking in some fashion if I'm baking them or I'm frying them or something to that effect, you know, then I can smother them in something else like a like a, a hollandaise sauce or something let you kill the flavor <laughs> i'm sorry what has anybody found to pair with this cab sauce the spinach empanada is nice so, so well i mean apparently the like just steak without the chimichurri seems to go pretty well so no chimichurri yeah, yeah it's like it's me it's dulling everything that i've tried yeah, so you, you want the vegetables. I like the wine, so it's just fine because it is. Okay. <laughs> Here, we, we, I'll we, try some meat. <laughs> uh, apparently, the, some people think the wine stands on its own. I do like okay. it by itself. I'm, I'm just yeah. not finding anything that pairs well with it. So I think if you focus on the wine alone and you were like, at 20 seconds, I taste this. At 23, I taste that. Maybe that's where this wine shines. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> adding on its own yes agree it's good with salami it's good with salami 
We hear, I hear. I like it with the spinach and banana and the beef and banana. I did not like it with the beef and banana. Really? At all. I thought the licorice was the only one. I didn't even love it with the licorice. It wasn't it's really weird with the cookie. Yeah, that, I was just about to say it's it's kind of weird with the cookie. Dark chocolate now. Okay. Like at first, I taste nutmeg, then it gets like yeah, but you... or, yeah, salad. or the dates if you like. Yeah, that, that, that was not that was not my favorite pairing. Yeah, they were. That, that's, that's not in the, the top ten. So of I, I think these are still good. I'm just gonna put a couple out. Yeah, no, I like it with the blue cheese. Blue cheese and cab. Yeah. Good pairing. And then which of these would you like? Do you want to do you uh, want to try? No, I'd like to just have a oh okay. How, how about how about the huckleberry bark? I don't know. Huckleberry. It's uh it's huckleberry and chocolate. Okay. Uh, so my favorite salad is this place called the Tea Bar. Hey. Okay. So, uh, any closing thoughts? Did did anyone have any uh, any favorites tonight? Not the Chardonnay was really great. Whatever it was, I, I like that was the most surprising. Let me put it that way. Yeah. yeah, Argentinian, you know, Chardonnay was yeah, it was kind of surprising. I love all these, but I did like I I would say of all of these, the Chardonnay was my favorite. Yeah. Really? I'm gonna go with the Malbec with the steak was my favorite. Yeah. Which I think is the first time I've ever said a Malbec was my favorite. So <laughs> well, I how many other times have you had uh you know like because you because you had steak and chimichurri as well, right? <laughs> yeah, I had a steak and chimichurri. Because oh yeah. So, so yeah, I and, and the, the first time I'd say the first time anyone has, you know, chimichurri steak and a Malbec, um, it's kind of a religious experience. <laughs> so cool. Um, so Richard, you said that on the Bernarda, the grapes grow really fast, but isn't that usually a bad thing? Like, do you want the grapes to suffer? No, I mean, you know, what what will want? It's, it's not that they grow fast; they just grow a lot of them. Okay. Which so it's not you know, like you put it in Missouri and throw a bunch of fertilizer and you get like mm -hmm. well, well, see, but that's that's the thing is that uh, just singing. A, a, like a Ready? lot of a, a lot of Napa places. Well, actually, uh, the practice in a lot of uh, what kind of bark? Huckleberry. Oh, huckleberry. <laughs> it's, okay. it's actually really angels singing around here. Oh, okay. I'm gonna make uh, tilapia. Sorry for interrupting. Uh, yeah, no, I, I can't remember where we were going. What, what was the question there, Kurt? <laughs> you need to say that grow faster. Immediately, you don't want grapes to grow faster. You want to. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So, so norm. Well, there, there, there's there's two two parts to that. So one, yeah. if if things actually grow too fast, like say it's it's yeah. like really wet and really it's warm for, for yeah. most of that area. Um, what'll happen is they'll actually harvest early because they'll, they'll test the bricks on the grapes and be like, well, we need to harvest these now or else they're, they're going to be ruined by the time that, you know, uh, like late, late August, September comes around. So what'll happen is they'll, they'll harvest in say July. And what'll happen is that, uh, they'll actually have sometimes have a second growth. Oh my gosh. That wow. that then they'll harvest in say like late September, October. Yeah. So but, 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 have a good wine from Missouri. Yeah, but but the other the other method for you know getting the most flavor out of out of a grape is instead of you know getting you know they they all actually have like a ton of clusters and they'll actually snip off some of the ones that are looking a little weak. Right. And so that so that way all of the nutrients and, and flavor and everything kind of shunt over to the remaining clusters. We yeah. do that on growing tea roses too, by the way. Okay. Yeah, you did. So, so do you know, is there like a, a story like that with this Panero where, I mean, they just want to get as many grapes as possible to make as much wine as possible? 
but you know. yeah, I mean, you know, well, I mean, that's that's kind of most big production places or you know places that that really haven't had to to concentrate on quality yet. Um, you know, for places that are are known for their quality, which is like Napa and like like your first and second crew, uh, you know, in France. Awesome. Th those places that, that yeah they'll they'll trim off like two thirds of their clusters just so that you know what's remaining is very concentrated, and they can also you know command a, a higher price because well there's not as many grapes to make as much wine. Right. So uh, next tasting in, in three weeks. Does anyone have any suggestions for where they would like to to focus? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Let's see. Yeah, I, I kind of I requested that a while ago, but I need to like I don't get to set the agenda. So no, I mean I mean that was that was like number three. And if we haven't come back around to it, yeah, we could definitely do Spain. You know, I mean Spain Spain's kind of easy because because I mean for for, for our, our whites, uh we, we've got cava. So we're 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 definitely gonna have a we're gonna throw a bubble in. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and, and, then, and then we're going to be going through, you know, temp Tempranillo <laughs> in the Rio yeah. region. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we could definitely do that. Um, I, I, I'd also say for for those of you with uh, Costco memberships, um, get yes. over to Costco and get your advent calendar. Because well, we're working we're on it. I got the I got the beer one. So. <laughs> So it, uh, I saw your post, but I wasn't sure whether it was an endorsement or not. Oh yeah, yeah, just like just like last year. Oh, um, it's not going to be great. Don't worry, it's going to be okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that. Yeah, they're they're mostly okay. Well, I haven't checked. I haven't checked these yet. You know, I'm I'm hoping that these are going to be better than last year. Um, but yeah, so you get you get 24 bottles in there, and they're they're 375 milliliter. So you also, you know, not having to go through right a whole a whole bottle of wine a day. Um, and so we, what we do is we, we split them up into to four clusters. I, I try to, you know, cluster them instead of doing them for like a six day period. Um, what I do is I, I usually look at which ones are from, say, like Italy or France or you know, all the weird regions, like I think some of them were like from Bulgaria and, you know, places like that. And we will, you know, and so I'll, I'll do every, instead of right now, how we're doing them every three weeks, um, then I'll go back down to two weeks because then we're not having to, you know, once you have your box, you know, you, you're, you're kind of set for two months. It's truly. And, and so, so that, that, that's kind of the plan is, you know, for those that, that will have them, um, or that, you know, those that don't have Costco memberships, I actually bought an extra box to, um, pour into tasting vials to, to send off. Did they have a <laughs> limit on how many you could buy? I bought two last time. No, I, I, I bought three of them. So we had a, like a, a, you could only get two limit last oh. I at least for for my place they had like thirty nine of nine of them and they just let me buy as many as I wanted. 